Today let's talk about the power system voltage stability. The power system stability is based on three interrelated pillars. It's the voltage stability, frequency and angular stability. Today we will address the voltage stability. The voltage stability is always related to the reactance between the source and the load. So this is the reactance we are talking about. The reactance is composed by the reactance of the source. This could be a power station and the reactance of the line between the source and the load. So both reactances are combined in our model. For simplicity reasons, I use only an ohmic load, a variable ohmic load. What you see on this curve is the relation between the power demand of the load and the voltage at the load. In order to increase the power demand of the load, you have to reduce the ohmic resistance of the load and then there will be more current flowing through the load. When you start to increase the power demand of the load, by reducing the resistance of the load, more current will flow from the source to the load. And because of the voltage drop in this reactance here, you also will get a voltage drop at the load. And this is what is addressed with the topic voltage stability. So when I increase the load, I reduce the voltage, you see that there will be more and more voltage drop across the line and therefore the curve will approach a tipping point and above the tipping point the voltage will collapse. What you would also observe is a phasor angle shift between the voltage at the load and the voltage at the source. And above the tipping point, this phasor angle would basically also collapse, so the generator would just be accelerated. It cannot evacuate the power anymore into the network, and therefore the speed of the generator would accelerate. Let's now go to the simulator and build a 420 kV, one phase only, very simple model to make the case. This model you have here now the power source. Here you have the reactants between the source and the load, including the reactor of the source. And then you have a load resistance which represents the, the power demand. On the curves you see the voltage curve of the source and the voltage curve of the load. When the demand is not high, and by the way, the power is the red curve. So you have one red curve on the load side and one red curve on the, on the source side. They are oscillating with 100 Hertz, as we have learned before. So let's see now what happens when I start to increase the power demand. I would have to reduce the resistance of the load. And what you would see now, I increase the power, so the red curve goes up. The power and the current curves are both jumping because of the automated adaption of the resolution. I continue to increase uh, the demand by reducing the ohmic resistance. And you see that the power curve is going up, the current is going up. And what you also see now is that there is now a phase angle between the source voltage and the load voltage. So I continue. Power goes up. Remember this curve we showed before? And what you see is that the voltage at the load is now starting to decrease noticeably. The power is still increasing until we reach the tipping point and at the tipping point the power has now also started to decrease again. So this is not typically what would happen with a voltage collapse. In reality I would have a generator where there would be a torque applied to the shaft of the generator and this the torque would basically change the would transform the mechanical power into electric power and you can see now what would happen in this case if i increase the demand you see that the frequency of the generator goes down so i, I would have to increase the torque and above the certain tipping point the speed of the generator would accelerate uncontrolled. This is what you can see now. As usual, you can go to the simulator. This is the link. 
so you can play around with the model and get the feeling for the reality.